Hi everyone, and welcome to this chapter. In this chapter, we're gonna talk about inherited model. In the previous chapter, we talked about inherited widget and how that's useful for redrawing its children widget uh, whenever there's some change happening in the inherited widget itself. And we saw that inherited widget itself had a constant constructor, meaning that when you're calling the constant constructor of your super class, which is inherited widget, you couldn't, your class can't really change internally because it's marked as a constant. And that's the reason inherited widget and inherited model that we're going to talk about in this chapter, they both need to be basically embedded or inserted inside a stateful widget in order for changes to actually take effect. So you may, you may be wondering, okay, so if they're inserted inside a stateful widget, then what's the point of having these logic? I mean, if you look at stateful widget, you call set state and all the widgets inside that inherited widget dependent on whether they're actually changed or not um for instance if they have a key or something or not actually then they can decide whether they need to be updated or not however when you have inherited uh, widget then you will actually be given the chance by the inherited widget itself uh, using a function whether your descendants need to be redrawn. So there's an extra function on inherited widget that allows you to make a decision whether your descendants have to be redrawn. And that's something that a stateful widget doesn't have. And inherited model, which we're gonna talk about in this chapter is taking this to a next level and giving the inherited model the ability to have various fields that may or may not change and not only will it be able to make a decision whether its descendants have to be redrawn, but it would also be given the chance to decide which descendant has to be redrawn. So let's say that your inherited model has two properties and it will the inherited model is in, embedded inside a stateful widget. And the stateful widget will then, for instance, say, okay, inherited model is changed, set it to a new instance or changes properties. Um, and by changing its properties, I mean create a new instance and change the properties. Um, then the inherited uh, model will be given a chance by Flutter SDK to, first of all, make a decision, has anything changed? If the answer to that is no, then no descendants of that inherited model are going to be redrawn. However, if the answer to that is yes, the inherited model is going to be then given a chance to say, okay, what did exactly change? Which aspect of this class has changed and any descendants that are listening to that aspect or property are then going to be redrawn so, uh, as a result. So um, in this chapter, we're going to be looking at this example. I will bring this simulator to my screen and perhaps make it bigger here so you'll see. So this is what we're going to do. It's not so exciting, but it actually demonstrates the fact that, uh, for instance, pressing this change color to button in here only redraws this little widget that is at the bottom of the screen. It won't redraw the widgets on top. So if I press change color one, you can see that this is changed. And if we then look at the logs, we, as you will see in this chapter, we're gonna add some logs to this code. These two widgets will actually log when they're being rebuilt. And by pressing this, the first widget isn't gonna be rebuilt. So this is what we're gonna develop in this chapter, and this is, going to demonstrate that by using inherited model in the right way, you can avoid unnecessary builds on widgets that haven't basically changed, okay? So that was a an introduction basically to this chapter. And we're going to go and have a look at what inherited model is. And as you can see, it allows you to redraw only relevant parts of your widget tree. Um, and I've already explained this. So your inherited model can make a decision not only whether its descendants have to be redrawn, but also which descendant has to be redrawn, okay? So I know I mentioned this a little bit um, just earlier. I said aspect and I put in quote, quotation marks because that's the way inherited model in Flutter is marked to work and, or it's built to work. And aspect is really just a set of changes. I mean, literally you could just say it's strings. So descendants of your inherited model will listen to specific changes of an aspect of your um, inherited model. Let's say in this case, this is aspect is called color one, and this one is called color two. This widget at the top says, I'm interested in the aspect name color one, 
And this one says, I'm interested in the aspect called color two. And when your inherited model is changed or replaced, for instance, by, an, uh, by a stateful widget, Flutter first says, hey, has anything at all changed in you? And it will give you the previous inherited model, which was a copy of your instance previously. And you will know what you are because you can access that using this, the, this keyword. And then you'll make a decision saying, yes, something has changed. You will just compare your previous values with the current values. And then it will also, if you return true from that function, then inherited model will actually be having an extra function that says, OK, here are all your descendants and what properties they've listened to. Take these properties and basically decide which descendant has to be redrawn. We will have a look at it. It sounds a little bit abstract, but I'll explain it all to you. So what we're going to do now is to build a demo application. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do some reshuffling here on the screen and bring up terminal here. Get full screen so you see it better. OK. So we're going to create a project in here. And um, we're going to call it testing inherited model underscore course. OK. So I'm going to say Flutter create testing inherited model course. And I like to set the organization as well. So I'm just going to say organization is epixality, but you don't have to do this. And if you have an organization, just put the uh, reverse uh, domain of your uh, organization here. OK, this is going to do its thing. Let's see. And let's go in here, um, testing inherited model course. And then I'm going to start Visual Studio code in here. OK, and let's just increase the size a little bit and then go to main dart here. All right. Um, what we're going to do in here then is to clean up the code because in here there is like a counter application. And I'm just going to remove all of that and add a Flutter state. Let's see, Flutter scaffold application in here. So you can see it's literally just a main function with a material app. And then we have a home page, which is, which is a stateless widget. All right. Let's convert this guy to a stateful widget because our home page is going to contain our inherited model. As I mentioned, inherited model is not stateful. Inherited model, please just concentrate on that a little bit because it's very important. Both inherited model and inherited widget, they are constants. So they have a constant constructor from their super and their properties shouldn't change. So they contain state, but they're a constant. It's very important to focus on that. And you make them stateful by wrapping them in a stateful widget. It, if there's anything you take away from this chapter, I, I want it to be this one because you need to understand that inherited model and inherited widget, they are constants and it, they don't change. OK, so as you can see in here, how will we manage the state? Our stateful widget will create an instance of our inherited model, which itself is an inherited widget. So here is our stateful widget, which then will contain a copy of our inherited model. All right. And if you just type in here inherited model and go to a source code, you'll see that it's an inherited widget, which I believe is a proxy widget. And that itself is a widget. So you can see, and that's a diagnosable tree or something. So I think, I mean, I'm not going to go into the source code for Flutter, but if you're if you're serious about learning Flutter, I strongly suggest that you don't just use it, but actually go into the source code and have a look at how it's built. Like, what is inherited model? You can go read the source code and get a lot more information by just doing that. Okay. So as you saw uh, in our demo application, if I bring it back up here. Uh, there is a, an array that I have defined, uh, an, an array of um, random colors. So, or actually, we could say not random colors, uh, an array of colors. And then we're randomly picking colors from that array whenever we tap any of these buttons. Okay. So, let's go ahead and define an array of colors. So, um, let me bring up that array of colors. Instead of writing that by hand, I'm just going to paste it here. So this is one of the cases I think pasting is completely fine because color an array of colors is kind of repetitive for me just to type. So as you can see, it's just an array of colors in here. It says colors, blue, red, yellow, orange, purple, 
cyan, cayenne, cyan, I don't know, brown, amber, and deep purple. So that's our array of colors. Then what we need is to be able to grab a random element from this array of colors. So whenever the button is tapped, we say, hey, button, go and grab this color and set it to, yeah, a random color from uh, our colors array, OK? So let's go ahead and write that extension. So I'm just going to say extension random element. And we want to extend uh, an iterable. And iterables are generic. So they have this T in here, which is their type. And then we're going to say T on iterable, OK? And in here, I'm just going to say we return a, a value of, of type T. Let me increase the size as well. And I'm going to call it get random element. So get random element like this. OK, and then we're going to say it returns element at, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we're going to say math dot. Actually, we don't have math I can see in here. So let's go import that import dart math. OK, and then we could say show random because that's what we're going to use. So let's say random. And in here, we're going to say random next int. And we should say length because it's exclusive i believe so this is this is our function it's very simple so you can see it says random elements on iterable returns the same type that the iterable contains and then we use the random class in math dark math and we say next integer up to but not including the length all right so this is going to give us ability to extract random elements for instance if i say final color is colors random get random elements right and now you can see color is actually a material color. So that's how that extension works. Okay, so that part is done. So we also need to have um, an, an enumeration for our colors. You see, in this example that I showed you, um, how did these two know that they are bound to a specific color? Well, they don't. We're not going to just pass a color to them. That would be kind of like a manual dependency injection. What we're going to do is to define an enumeration called available colors or something like that. And that enumeration is going to have two values in it or two cases in it. One is called color one. The other one is called color two. We're going to use these as aspects of our inherited model. Inherited model is going to allow you to listen to, is going to allow you to decide whether specific aspects of that inherited model have changed. And I mentioned to you before that that aspect, you can kind of think of it as a string. But that's the inherited model itself. But how do these widgets know what they actually have to listen to? And they do that by us having an enumeration that we are going to call available colors. OK, so let and don't worry if this is a little bit abstract. I, I understand that it is abstract, but we're going to talk about it soon. So let's go ahead and define our available colors enumeration. I'm going to go and bring the source code in here and see if I can paste it here instead of just typing it. So here. So we have an enumeration available colors, one, two. And think of it that this is our hook into those two views, the top one and the bottom one. And these hooks then are going to be used throughout this entire application, both on the inherited model side and on those widget sides to decide what has changed and what needs to be redrawn. OK? So let's then go ahead and create our first inherited model. All right, so I'm going to put it right after this home home state, or maybe after available colors. OK, so inherited model, it needs to basically know what kind of state it's managing. So it's a generic. So if we actually look at the source code for inherited model, let's have a look here. Inherited model. I'm improvising a little bit here, but you can see it says inherited model of T extends inherited widget. So this T is a generic type. So you're telling it what kind of state you manage, OK? So let's go in here and say we have a class in here, class available colors widget. So we're calling it widget because as it's an inherited model. We could have called it available colors model. It's completely up to you. Naming is so difficult. I really don't know whether it should be widget or model. It's just an example. And then we say it extends inherited model of type available colors. OK, like that. We're saying that this available colors widget, um, it contains a state of type available colors. That's what we're saying. OK. So what we're going to do in here is actually hold on to two colors. So 
these colors are going to be of type available colors and we're going to call them color one and color two so let's go ahead and say final available colors color one and color two okay so this this widget this is inherent model basically is going to have these as its states all right let's go ahead and create the constructor and i'm going to say create constructor and let's go ahead and i think we have to have actually more information in here so let's say a, an op optional key because Inherited model actually needs a key in its constructor. Let's go ahead and have a look at it. You see it needs a key and it needs a required widget. So let's add the required widget in here as well. So required widget. And I'm going to put a curly bracket around all of this and, and make these required as well. OK. So and in here, we shouldn't forget to call super. So let's say super key is key and child is child just like that. Okay, so now we created the constructor and it's telling us to make it a constant. So have a look at this code and it shouldn't be that difficult to understand. It's just we're taking the key and the child that the inherited model actually needs, but we're adding two properties in here, a first and a second color, okay? Now, if you look at the previous chapter when we talked about inherited widgets, uh, our inherited model also needs to be available to its descendants. So the descendants of this available colors widget, which is going to actually be drawn in the widget tree, it is they, those widgets, they need to grab a copy of this and read the, the colors. So if you look here, this color is not being passed to this widget. This color is actually being grabbed by the widget itself, where it reach up the widget tree and grabs this available colors widget and says, hey, I want color one. That's what I'm interested in. And this guy is, say, is saying, hey, available colors widget, somewhere up the tree, I know you're there. I want to grab color two. What is it? OK, so we need to bring a way or create a way for this available colors widget to be able to be grabbed from the widget tree. OK, so let's go and create this very well known static of function. And this off function, you probably already seen like builder of context, blah, blah, of context. So it's usually working with the build context because build context is like your dependency injection kind of a, a, a way of going around adding dependency in uh, Flutter. So let's go ahead and create this little off function in here. The off function of inherited model is a little bit different from inherited widget. And because inherited widget, it was like, you have to say say context depend on a specific type inherited blah 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 but this is going to be a little bit shorter as you'll soon see okay so let's say static available colors uh, widget so this static function is going to return a copy of this available colors widget with jit of and then we say build context of and context like that okay and in here, then <clears throat> we actually need one more parameter. I'll show it to you what that is. So in here, we're going to soon add that parameter, OK? So in here, the way to do that, to grab our inherited model copy, is to say inherited model. And it says inherit from. And in here, we'll say uh, we will return an available colors widget like this. And you can see we're passing the context. However, there's one more property in here, and that is this aspect property. And you can see now this aspect property, let's see if you can get its type, it says it's an object, but what we know which aspects we're managing, which is this available colors. So let's go and pass that aspect in here. So we say aspect, okay? And then I'm gonna pass that aspect in here, okay? And you see it says the body might complete normally causing null because inherit from returns, um, returns an optional, okay? But we're gonna force on wrap it in here like that. And we forgot return completely. And then let's put a force on wrap there. So that's it. And let's put a trailing comma in there. So this function is a little bit cleaner, okay? You could also change this function to an error function if you want to. But let me just talk a little bit more about this function. So if you didn't understand what this is actually doing, it's it, this function is, is not going to be used in this inherited model class itself. This function is only going to be used in our descendants. 
the children of this inherited model, if you will. Inherited model has a child property. It can be a row. It can be a column. The column itself may have columns. The column itself may have columns that have rows. So this inherited model widget in the widget tree can contain unlimited number of other widgets. And this available colors widget of, I mean, this of function is a way for those children widget to be able to grab up the ladder and grab a copy or grab an instance of this available colors widget if it's available. So depending on your design choice, you may actually turn this to an optional and remove this asterisk from there. So it is a safer operation actually to return an optional and get rid of the asterisk. But for the simplicity, for the for, for the sake of simplicity in this particular example, I'm just gonna force on ramp result, okay? And meaning that if anyone at the under the widget tree and somewhere in the widget tree tries to grab up the widget tree and grab a copy of available colors widget and that is not available, then you will get a crash. You will get an exception. So we can live with that for this example, all right? So um, we've already talked about this off function that this is how we're going to implement the available colors widget of. Uh, so we don't have to talk about that. So let's then talk about how Flutter then understands whether something, some of the children, one or, or n number of children of this widget tree, our inherited model, needs to be redrawn or whether Flutter understands or if it, or it's a way for us to tell Flutter, Flutter whether something in the widget tree has actually changed, okay? So I talked about it briefly before, but we're now gonna actually go and implement that because the implementation is gonna be done with a function called update should notify. So let's go ahead and type that update should notify override, or maybe we could get help from Visual Studio Code in here. So let's say create two missing overrides and that's, that's actually better. So update should notify, this is, the bigger picture. This is literally Flutter telling you, hey, you have this previous instance of yourself, let's call it available colors widget. You have this previous instance of yourself and you know who you are using the this keyword. Tell me if anything has changed, okay? So this is very straightforward question basically from Flutter. And in here, we are going to, uh, let's actually see, uh, I'm gonna put the code in here, sorry, the title. So, we need to code this. So we need to write some code in here and tell Flutter something may have changed. And the way to do that is we're going to say return color one is not equal to old widget color one. Actually, does it have color one? Inherited model. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong function. I apologize for that. So let's put that code back. Let's go to update should notify in here. OK, so we're going to say color one is not equal to old widget color one, or color two is not equal to old widget. So we're saying that, hey, Flutter, if our current color one is not the same as the previous color one, something has changed. Or if the color two is not the same as the previous color two, something has changed. So we're literally looking at these two properties, two states that we're holding on to, okay? So let's go ahead in here also, let's add some logging because we want, we want to actually see these things work. Uh, when I'm developing Flutter applications, I don't just like to go and blindly write the code. I wanna actually see what things are doing, which functions are being called. And when I do this, I usually put breakpoints. I don't use logging, but I think logging is also a good visual way of seeing how things work. So let's go ahead and import a Dart developer and then we say as dev tools show log. Okay, so we need some logging. And let's then go in here and put dev tools log. And let's just type the name of this function in here. Okay, so we're saying anytime this function gets called, I want to see that being logged in the debug console. Okay, what happens next? What happens when update should notify returns false? Well, nothing. Uh, Flutter says, okay, nothing has changed in the widget tree. I'm not going to have to redraw any children. However, if, in, if the return value of this update should notify is true, then update should notify dependent will be called. And as you can see in here, it says, hey, this function returned true. Hmm, 
Here's an instance of you, how you were before. And here are here is a set of your states, which is like every available colors. You have color one and color two. Look at these and see if that particular aspect has changed. So now it's like going more granular. It's going, it's telling you, hey, you told me something changed, but what actually changed? So this is your way then, this is your chance to go deep and say, hmm, did color one really change? Because in here, you're comparing all your aspects. You have no way of actually telling Flutter in here by just a boolean of true or false, what has changed? It's just a yes or no. In here is, is telling you, hey, for every aspect of you being changed, I want you to tell me whether that aspect was actually changed. So, so let's have a look at implementing this function. So we need to have a look at these various aspects, okay, which are in these dependencies. So let's go ahead and add some log in here first. So we're gonna say dev tools log, and let's just log this function, okay? Like that. Okay. And then we're gonna say, if dependencies contains available colors color one, available colors one, okay? And color one is not the same as old widgets color one. And remember, this old widget should actually be changed to available colors, available colors widgets, okay? So now that we've done that, then in here, we could, we could just say return true. So have a look at this code again. So we're saying if any of our dependence is dependent on this available colors one, and that color is not the same as it was before, then yes, that widget has to be redrawn. And this may actually look a little bit strange to you. Dependencies, what does that even mean? Dependencies, contains. Well, we haven't talked about it yet, and that's probably why it is a little bit confusing. When we actually develop these widgets, we will reach up the ladder in the hierarchy of our widgets. And we say, find this little guy, uh, available colors widget using this of. And then there is a function which inherited model exposes, which we don't expose, that says this particular widget is now interested in this particular aspect of the inherited model. And that creates the hook, that creates the dependency at the Flutter level, at the Flutter SDK level, so, something that we don't do manually. So once that is done, Flutter understands, hey, there's one, at least one widget who is interested in this particular aspect of your inherited model. And then whenever it calls the update should notify function, if that update notif should notify function returns true, then it comes to update should notify dependent and passes that dependency inside the set, okay? So um, that's how it works. And we should do the same thing for the second color. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna copy this code in here. I'm gonna say, if it contains color two and color two has changed, then return true. Otherwise, we're just gonna say, let me bring the code as well so you can see. Otherwise, return false. So that's how we implemented that part, okay? So now I actually went a little bit deeper than I was supposed to, but I told you that we need a widget that is listening to colors. So you saw in this example that we have these two lovely widgets in here. They're very simple. They're literally just containers, but they're, the special thing about them is that they have dependency on our inherited model, okay? So we're, we're going to need to write these uh, widgets in here. So let's go ahead and create a little class in here. We call it class color widget extends stateless widget. All right, missing concrete. Oh, maybe I should have just actually done an STL in here. So color widget, just like that. Okay, so it creates the constructor and the override build for me. Okay, now that we have now that we have that, we're gonna go and add basically uh, our color in here. So every color widget has it will grab basically this enum in here. Let's see. We tell every color widget that hey, you're listening to either color one or color two. Okay, so it has to have that 
um, final available colors color, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. So let's go and say final available colors of color. So this is like we're telling that widget, hey, you're not interested in both colors or all colors. You're interested in only in, for instance, color one or two. Okay. So let's go ahead and in the color widgets constructor, add that final field and make it required. So Dart is happy like that. Okay. And then what we also want to do is since both these widgets, these, this one and this one, since they're both uh, basically copies of this color widget, we want to add some logging in the build function so that we get logs in the debug console, whether the first one has been uh, changed or the second one has been changed. And we do that using this color, available colors dependency, okay? So let's go ahead and switch. So I'm going to say switch um, color, or did we call it color? Yeah, color. And I'd like to get Visual Studio Code to complete this code for me. So I'm not going to add this, which is myself. So add missing cases, like here. And we're going to say dev tools, log, color one, widget, got, rebuilt, like that. And I'm going to add this in here, color two, widget, got rebuilt, OK? After adding the logs, it's time to actually create the container for this guy. So you can see it's a very simple container. It has a specific height, and it just has a color. That's it. So let's go ahead and actually create our container here. I can see we can add a height to it right here. Let's say height of 100. But how do we get the color? Hmm, that's interesting. So we can actually grab our provider in here because, I mean, the provider has the colors, right? Here's, let's have a look at the uh, provider again. Here, available colors, color one, available colors, color two, okay? So we could actually look at this provider. Let, let me have a look at the source code that I've written in here. So, and um, I mean, to be honest with you, in here, we kind of need to actually grab colors. So maybe we should change this color one. Uh, and color two, instead of having available colors to actually return the actual color, not available color. So let's say material color in here instead, okay? Material color. So, and it, it makes no difference for the provider. It just It's just properties, okay? So there's no difference. If we didn't do that, we would have to go and extend this available colors kind of to say, grab a color from any of these cases. But it's easier just to change this to material color, okay? So go in. Go ahead and change these available colors inside your available colors widget to material color, just like that. So now that we've done that, we can go to our color widget and actually grab that color. But how do we get a copy of that provider? And the way to do that is we use that off function that we talked about a little bit earlier. So let's go ahead and say final provider is available colors widget of context. Right, context. And we kind of need our color. So this is the aspect. Do you remember this function here? You see, it says, give me the color that you're interested in, aspect, available colors. And remember, we have it. In our color widget, we have that available colors aspect. So let's pass it in here. So we're interested in color. OK, so then we got a copy of our provider. You see, available colors widget. OK. And provider as color one and color two. OK. So in our container, we're going to say height 100 color is if our color is equal to available colors one, if that's the case, if we are dependent on available colors one, then let's get the provider color, provider color one. Otherwise, get the provider color two. OK, so this is also simple. So have a look at the code, please. They grab the provider, and then depending on whether we're dependent on available colors one, we grab providers color one. Otherwise, we grab providers color two. OK, so now that we've done that, who actually owns these colors? As we saw, available colors widget has just a final uh, two final fields. It's not really, it's not really owning those. It is getting those. So who is actually owning them? And that is our homepage state. 
So homepage is actually going to own the state, but it's going to pass it to the provider. OK, so let's add those colors to our homepage. And let's just say var color one. And let's actually make them like this. So color one is equal. Or, yeah. But you know, I mean, this is kind of like a private property. So you should put underscore. Well, I'm not going to put underscore because I think in all the uh, titles at the bottom of the screen, I've just named them color one and color two. So it'll be a little bit misleading for you. But if you want to, you can just go and change them to underscore color one and underscore color two. So let's say that's equal to colors yellow. Let's start with yellow. And bar color two is colors blue. OK, so. OK, now that we've done that, you can see we have a scaffold, but we have no, no body in the uh, scaffold. We just have an app bar. So let's go ahead and say for the body, we're going to use uh, available colors widget. It's just a widget, right? It's an inherited model. But as you saw, inherited model, it is internally a proxy widget. And proxy widget is a widget, which is a diagnosable tree. So you can place it inside your widget tree. So let's go ahead and construct this guy. So there is no key that we're passing. The color one is color one. Color two is color two. And then we have a little child in here. So uh, for the child, I'm actually going to go to the next line. And for the child, we are going to add a column in here. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's add a column. And for children, children, I'm just going to say an empty array for now. And we're missing, I think, one of these. Expected, expected. There are so many expected. I've kind of like lost which one is which. Available colors, blah, blah. Let's clean that up. Expected to find. Okay. Now you found it. Expected to find another one. Okay. Now you found it. Okay. Maybe that's. Okay. You know what? I'm going to actually remove this. <laughs> it's just so weird. So let me remove the body in here. Okay. Yeah, I think the reason, I mean, I'm getting a little bit confused here is because the the font is so big on my screen that I, I usually don't have it like this. I can actually have much le uh, less, like a, a lot more text on the screen. So I actually see what is happening. So let's just say available colors widget from the beginning like this. OK, let's do it right. Then we say color one is color one. Color two is color two. And it says, OK, child should be provided. And for the child, we say column and its children are empty. OK. It's a lot better now, OK? <laughs> All right, so uh, that's our available colors widget inside the uh, home page. And the reason I'm putting it here, because it's children then going to be able to reach up the ladder, up the uh, hierarchy, and grab a copy of this available colors widget using that off function, OK? So it has to have a child that basically contains all the other children, OK? So if you look at the demo in here that we have, we need a row that we put two buttons in here. OK, so let's go ahead and say the first child of this column is actually a row and it has children, which are kind of like empty at the moment, like this. OK, and we have to add then two buttons in here. So as you can see in the row, create two text button instances, each of which changes a color and calls set state. OK, so let's go ahead and actually do that. So this is going to be very, very nice. So let's add two text buttons. So text button. And two properties this guy needs. And one is this unpressed, this, and the other one is the child. And for the child of the first one, we're going to say it's a const text change color one, like this. And I'm then going to copy this text button and put it here again. And, and instead, I'm going to say it's change color two, because I think that's how we name them change color one and change color two, OK? So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to call set state because we're a stateful widget, okay, like this. And let's in here then say color one is equal to uh, colors get random element. That's it, okay. So and in the text button, the second text button, we're going to set color two to colors get random element. <clears throat> OK, now that we've done that, after this row in here, after this row, we're going to add uh, basically two instances <clears throat> of our color widget. So let's go ahead and say color widget. Yes. Color is available colors one. 
And yeah, it has to be const as well. Great, so that's the first. And let's go ahead and say color two. Okay, so this is how we're basically injecting those dependencies. So I'm then gonna say um, somehow, was it these keys or how do we actually command shift? Yeah, select device, iPhone 13 Pro. And then I'm gonna say run without debugging. Let's see what happens in here. Okay, so um, we need to have a look at it, a little demo just to make sure that all of this is working fine. So if you look at the code, really, it's not that difficult. It's just the stateful. I mean, there are some keys in here. The stateful widget contains the actual colors, not the inherited model. The inherited model propagates those to its descendants. Remember that, okay? So inherited model itself doesn't actually contain the colors. It kind of like propagates them down the chain, all right? So let's have a look at this demo and see if it works. So if we bring the app up, first is yellow and blue, color one and color two. And you can see the logging here. It's very important to have a look at the logs. It says color one widget got rebuilt. Kind of understandable because yeah, it was its first build time, right? It had to be rebuilt. So now let's change color one. And remember, remember the way we actually did this <clears throat> function in here, which is get random element, it doesn't it doesn't guarantee that the newly generated color is going to be different from the previous one. So sometimes when you tap these buttons, the color actually doesn't change. And that's okay. I think that's a small price to pay for the sake of simplicity, okay? So let's press this button and hope for the best, hope for the newly generated color to actually be different from the previous one. So boom. And you can see now, update should notify got called. Update should notify was here. <clears throat> Let's go to here. So the colors first changed. The first color actually changed in our stateful widget. OK, that's the first thing that happened. Then we call set state. So let's have a look at the code here. Color one changed. Set state was called. Stateful widget tried to rebuild its children. But it doesn't really know which one to rebuild. Then Flutter understood that this widget that owns all those other widgets is an inherited model. Flutter then called update should notify on the inherited model. Let's find the code for it. Here, we log this text in here. Okay, we log that. And then we compared color one, which is, you see the color one is actually passed to us newly, right? because we are inside a stateful widget. So stateful widget is rebuilding us and we have an old copy of ourselves. So then we compare and we say, yeah, actually color one, the new color one is not the same as the previous one. This is where the magic really happens because Flutter SDK is keeping a copy of your previous instance and passing it to you. So it's allowing you to do a diff. Then in here, we say, yeah, color one is not the same as color two. Then the return is true. And then Flutter says, ah, oh, OK. So if something did change. Then it comes in here and says, update should notify dependent. You can see in here, update should notify. Then in here, we uh, dev tools log that message, as you can see. And then we say, hmm, if any of our dependents are dependent on color one, and that color has actually changed, then yes, they need to be rebuilt. And Flutter says, ah, OK, I know then which dependent that is. Then it goes to that particular dependent, which is the first widget. And that first widget says color one widget got rebuilt. OK, so this is basically the gist of it. So now we can press this one. And the color, you see, this is what I mentioned. Sometimes when you press it, the colors don't actually change. And that's because get random element doesn't guarantee that the color is going to be random. So. Again, we got the same color, or did we not? Did we not actually code this? Hmm. Let's go to our button and see what we did there. Probably a copy paste problem. Text button color two colors get random element change color two. Are we really getting the same color over and over again? I don't believe that. That 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 that, that. color one thing is working is color two that is not working. So let's see if you can actually understand how this is working. So maybe in here, I'm not passing the colors correctly. Color one, color two, color one, color two, and it's blue. 
how has it changed to yellow? Let's let's do a hot restart, okay? So change color to, and let's actually see if that text button is being called. On pressed color two, colors get random element. I'm gonna put a dev tools, log, color two, okay? I think it's being called, but maybe the provider is doing something nasty, okay? So this one is doing its job. So let's go to our provider, it's not a problem. No need to panic. Let's go here and have a look at the code here, color two, old widget color two. And in here, dependencies, color two, color two, return true. Yeah. Then color widget. And then in here we say, listen for that color. Okay. And available colors will cover one. Otherwise use provider color two. Okay. That seems also fine to me. I don't think there's anything wrong in here, to be honest with you. So what else could be wrong? Could it be something in inside here, perhaps? One, two, okay, and color one and color two. I mean, I don't, I don't directly see what the problem could actually be. I can see in here repressing that, and that doesn't work. But this one works, and it basically changes both of them. Um. Oh, now I see. Yeah, I apologize for that. I mean, you may have actually seen this, but I didn't see it earlier. We're not calling set state. That was, uh, that was. I'm not even going to use the word. Uh, so set state's not being called. So I apologize for that. If, you, if you'd if you seen that before, uh, you are probably just sitting in your chair and thinking, oh, what are you doing? But I didn't see it, and that's OK. So um, let's do a hot restart. And then if I say change color to, then you can see only the color two widget is being rebuilt. You see here? And then tap it again. Only color two is being rebuilt. Color one. This, we got the same color. You see, we got the same color. So color one widget wasn't being rebuilt. And now it got rebuilt, only that widget. So that's really it. I mean, there's not much more to it. It's um, what you can take away from this chapter is really that your inherited model and inherited widget are stateless. They don't have any state. They get state from outside. And that outside is usually a, a stateful widget. So the stateful widget actually contains the values and passes it down, passes those values down to your inherited model or inherited widget. So we've come far. Um, let's just commit our code then before we wrap up this chapter. So I'm going to say git at all. Uh, we're not a git repo. Okay, git init and then git at all. And let's say git commit step one. And I'd like to also um, tag my code. So let's say tag step one. OK, since we don't have a remote, we can't push these changes. So let, let it be like that for now. That's fine. So um, thank you for being here and hanging out with me, learning about inherited model in Flutter. In this chapter, we talked a lot about inherited model and talked also a little bit about uh, inherited widget, which we talked about already in the previous chapter. So I really hope that you enjoyed this chapter. And um, I hope to actually see you in the next one.